everyone and welcome to this video on key calculations and information needed for creating a flushing plan. This is part of a video series exploring water quality and building plumbing systems over long-term stagnation. My name is Elizabeth Montanino and I am a graduate student at Purdue University. There are four learning objectives for this video. First, you will learn how to calculate the amount of water that is inside a building water pipe. Next, you will learn how to measure water flow rate. Then, you will learn how to calculate the time needed to flush a water outlet. And then, finally, recognize the risks of estimating these factors without as-built construction drawings. I would like to acknowledge our collaborators at multiple organizations who have provided some information previewed here. Information about building water quality can be found in a publication shown here. You can also contact us for a copy. My teammates and I work on building water system safety through investigation and providing advice. We assist owners of commercial and residential systems as well as health officials. We conduct testing at Purdue University or on site at the building themselves. Feel free to learn more at our website, plumbingsafety.org. To create a flushing plan, you need to know the volume of water to be removed from the building. There are various objects that transport and store cold and hot water inside buildings. These include pipes, tanks, water fountains, water treatment equipment, just to name a few. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency specifically recommends that calculating water volume and measuring flow rate at the water outlet is important. Let's focus on calculating the amount of water in a plumbing system. This image shows what a building may contain. The basement is where the water pipe enters the building from the street through what's called a service line. From there, the water travels through a water softener for treatment and then to different locations in the building. Hot water is created by taking cold water after it passed through the softener and heating it. Hot water then travels through separate building pipes to the water use locations. You can see sinks, showers, water fountains, and outdoor spigots are shown in this drawing. To create a flushing plan, find the as-built construction drawings for the plumbing system. If using an as-built drawing, you can begin to trace the water's flow as it enters the building to different faucets. Here you can see there are nine pipe segments between where the water enters the building to one faucet on the far right side of the building. Once you physically measure the length of each pipe segment using a ruler, you can then use the scale to convert those measurements to real-world numbers. The drawing should identify what the pipe diameters are. Pay attention to changes in pipe diameter. I'll show you why that is important next. Here's an example calculation for the volume of water in a pipe. The as-built drawing indicated the pipe diameter is 2 inches. We measured the pipe segment was a quarter inch using a ruler. The drawing scales that if you measure a quarter inch, that translate to a real world one foot long pipe. So we have a two inch diameter, one foot long pipe. We could also say the pipe is two inch diameter and 12 inches long. One foot has 12 inches. Now we use the equation to calculate the water volume. The letter D is the diameter and the letter L is the pipe length. The table-like symbol is pi. Pi is a mathematical constant, and here we can assume it is 3.14. Now we work through the calculation, and the volume of water in the pipe is 37.68 cubic inches. But we care about gallons, so we need to convert cubic inches to gallons of water. When all is done, we can report the 2-inch diameter, 1-foot long pipe contains 0.17 gallons of water. We must do this calculation for all of our pipe segments. As you can see, each segment can have different water volume. This is because each pipe has a different diameter or length. Once we have calculated all the water volume from the building entry point to the faucet, we can add those numbers up. Here we have found 3.8 gallons of water sits in pipes between a faucet and where water enters the building. But there's a water softener tank we missed. All water passes through this seven and a half gallon tank once it enters the building. So in order to replace all the water between the faucet and building entry, we need to remove 11.3 gallons of water. Now that we have calculated the volume of water in the pipe, we need to know the flow rate. This will help us determine how long we have to run the faucet to remove all that water. 
First, get a container with a known volume. Turn on the faucet all the way and see how long it takes to fill the container. Divide the volume of the container by the amount of time it took to fill. This is your flow rate. Here are some useful tips and things to remember. Easy ways to measure flow rate are with a milk jug, which is one gallon, a known water volume, and a common household item. Also, a five gallon bucket will fill in 2.5 minutes if your Q, or flow rate, is 0.5 gallons per minute. If it takes 30 seconds to fill one gallon, your Q, or flow rate, will be 0.5 gallons per minute. Remember when you flush to consider the amount of water stored in tanks and other devices. Using the volume and flow rate information we have calculated, we can now figure out flushing time. Divide the flow rate of water by the volume of water, and you can see that it takes 22 minutes and 30 seconds to flush this specific faucet. Remember that the flushing time can vary for each tap. A few points about flow rate you should recognize. The speed at which water exits a faucet will affect how long it takes to remove the water in the pipes and tanks. There isn't an endless supply of water pressure, just like if you have too many activities in your home happening at once. Think about a washing machine, dishwasher, outdoor spigot, and showering. The speed at which water comes out of the faucets can drastically decrease. Any devices like aerators and filters can slow down the water coming out of a faucet. And again, remember that flow rates can vary for each tap inside the same room. The rest of the cold and hot water plumbing outlets would need to be flushed, so you can repeat the calculation at all those other outlets. If you don't have as-built construction drawings, you're going to have a difficult time in designing a flushing plan. I'll show you this example. We just calculated the actual amount of water in pipes for one location to be 0.17 gallons. If you ignore the different directions the pipes traveled in the wall and sizes, you can find yourself underestimating the amount of water in the pipes by more than eight times. While you may think 0.02 gallons versus 0.17 gallons isn't a lot, these errors can add up, especially for large buildings. If the estimated volume were used, old water may be left in the building after flushing. As-built construction drawings should be delivered to the building owner after every project. Thank you for listening. In this video, I explained how to calculate water volume inside a pipe, measure flow rate, and calculate flushing time for a single water outlet. I also explained what the risks are if you are estimating water volume flow rates, and flushing times without as-built construction drawings. Additional resources can be found at plumbingsafety.org. Thank you and have a great day.